Hi, um, my name is Serenity. I'm 13 years old and I'm here to testify to you. God has given me multiple visions about how this world is passing away and how people are getting enveloped in the snares of the devil. And God is letting me know people are getting involved in things not realizing that they're going to hell. I used to be a part of a blasphemous lifestyle for about one, two years. I was a part of a blasphemous lifestyle that I am deeply ashamed of now. And I feel that the dream that I'm going to testify to you guys will relate to my lifestyle at one time. And it hurts me to say that some people are going to end up in hell because of the way that they're living, the things that they're doing, the things that they're saying, not realizing that it's not pleasing to God and sometimes not even caring. So my dream began as me going to school. I go to JTL. Um, I was going to school, but before I got on the bus, me and my mother had got into an argument and she told me that she did not trust me anymore and she probably never would and that our trust, is, our trust was gone. And so, me being 13, I didn't really care. I was like, all right, you don't trust me. What am I supposed to do about that? Like, that's your issue, things like that. And I remember specifically in the um, dream, I had on a yellow mini skirt. And it came up like a little bit above my knees. But again, I didn't think much of it. So I'm getting onto the bus and um, I get on the bus and I look out the window and I look at the sky and I notice the sky is like a crimson red, like a color like this. And I'm like, oh, it's seven in the morning. Like the sun is probably rising. You know, again, I didn't think too much of it. I'm like, oh, the sun is probably coming up. That's why the sky is red. But the sky isn't that color red in the morning. So um, I get to school. And there is a lot of females that look um, and sound like boys and men. And I'm walking into school. I'm going up the stairwell. And these females are making like cat calls to me. Like, ooh, hey, you know, look good, things like that. And so I wasn't necessarily a part of that lifestyle in the dream, so I didn't entertain it, really. But I, like, looked back at the girls and smiled at them and things like that. So I get to my classroom, my math classroom, and um, my teacher's teaching, and then I hear on the loudspeaker, exit the building, this is not a drill, exit the building right now, immediately. And so everybody's leaving the classroom. I'm like, what? I'm really confused. And so I get out of the building and I look up and like the sky is blue, but it seems like there's almost a cloud over my school and it's like lightning and rain, like over the school and the lightning is like flashing and breaking into the school and I was confused on how I didn't hear that but yeah the lightning was destroying the school and so so I feel someone like a shadow coming up behind me and someone puts their hand on my shoulder I didn't know who it was but someone comes up behind me puts a hand on my shoulder and then everything is pitch black and I'm confused. I'm like, why is everything pitch black? And I'm looking around, feeling around, you know, the area, even though I can't see anything. I'm feeling around to see if I could find a wall 
or a light switch or something that I can be steady on to, you know, stable myself. So then a light comes on. It looks like it's if someone like flitched on a light switch. Like it looks like someone flipped it on. And I see my mom. And uh, she's looking at me. But it seems like as if she's looking in my direction, but she doesn't see me. So I'm like waving to her, calling out her name, like, mom, mom, mom. Like louder, continuously calling out to her. But again, she's looking in my direction, but it's as if she does not see me. And so I run towards the light and towards my mother. I'm running towards her and it seems like the more I run the farther away she gets but when I stop she doesn't seem far away like she seems about you know six yards away when I'm standing but it seems like she's getting farther and farther away as I'm running so I stop running and for about two minutes I stop running and then it's like the bottom like whatever floor I was standing on gives away and I fall and I fall onto this ground, but it's not like a sidewalk concrete as you would see outside. It was like many mountains like on the floor. And I'm like sitting up and then I'm like looking around and all I see is the floor covered in these sharp, many mountainous like things. And I look down at my body and I see my skirt and it's torn, it's ripped. And I um, look at my arms and they have bruises and gashes and it looks horrible. My arms look horrible. And um, I'm getting up and the whole floor is covered with these sharp objects. So, um, I'm getting upstairs. I mean, not upstairs. I'm walking. And I'm like walking in a way where I don't want to damage my feet in any way. So I'm walking oddly and I trip somehow and like I don't have on shoes so like my feet were hurting but it wasn't like my feet were going into the objects so I trip and I fall onto my side but it's not like the sharpness pierces through my body it's like I just fall and you know I get a few like minor scratches on my side and they bleed a little bit but it's not bad but my side aches so I get up again and I continue to walk in the weird way and I hear like the sound of um the sound of a clock like tick tock like a regular you know house clock that you would see and so um I'm like where is this sound coming from and then after a while the sound gets faster like tick tock tick tock like it sounds like like a stopwatch almost and then out of nowhere like the sound stops like the ticking and the talking stops and I hear your time is up and I'm creeped out cuz I don't know if that voice was talking to me where it came from and I'm looking around and I don't see anything again all I see is like the sharp objects all over the floor and the thing is like the air it was red like how I saw how the sky looked when I was going to school but it was like foggy but it wasn't too much fog like I was able to look around and see but I all I saw was the ground and so after I hear the voice saying your time is up I see something coming from the sky and from my point of view it looks like it's flying but then it's getting closer to me and it's this body but it's already disfigured its face is like distorted its body looks like 
it was made of clay like the way it was falling from the sky was horrible and so um the body falls from the sky and it falls onto the sharp objects that I'm trying to not hurt myself on and the body dies it falls and it dies on the sharp objects so I'm scared because I'm still confused on whether the voice was talking to me or to the body that just died and so I'm continuing to walk trying to find a way out trying to find an exit and then again I start hearing the sound of the clock and it going faster and then it stops and then I am um, hear the voice again but the thing about the voice it wasn't like a human voice that you would hear like you know outside it was a man's voice but it wasn't like a human man's voice it was like a powerful voice and it was like your time is up and I see another body fall and the first body fell on my left and the next body fell on my right and more bodies are falling I'm hearing the clock continuously ticking and I'm continuously hearing this voice saying your time is up and more bodies are falling so I came to my own conclusion like alright so clearly this voice isn't talking to me it's talking to the bodies that are falling from the sky so it's almost as if as I'm walking like I'm floating off the ground like I rise up off the ground but I'm not flying I'm like six feet off the ground and like I move forward like if you're on a hoverboard and you move forward and you move that's how it was and I'm moving forward cuz I'm leaning forward and more bodies are falling I'm continuously again hearing it, the ticking and the voice and more bodies are falling and dying. But I've had close encounters with the bodies, but none of them hit me. And I was never taken up and that um and was thrown to my death. That never happened to me. I witnessed bodies being judged, I guess. I wasn't clear on what was happening. But I was there to witness bodies being thrown out of the sky into this place and dying. And so um, <clears throat> I rub my eyes like this. I rub my eyes and I open my eyes and I'm back in my room. And I'm happy. But I'm confused because I was like, did I dream this? Because I'm dreaming already in real life. So I'm like, is... I was, my mind was like boggled. I was so confused. And so I look down at my body and I'm wearing my onesie, my brown onesie. And I roll up the sleeves and I look at my arms and I don't see any bruises that I saw when I was in the place. That creepy place where I was seeing all the dead bodies. I didn't, you know, see any bruises. I didn't have on my mini skirt. My legs, they look fine. And so I get up and I open my door. And I look out and it's darkness, complete darkness. And it's just like continuous darkness. Like I can't see anything. Like I can't even see a wall. And I look down and I see like fire but it's far away like it looks like a match but it obviously was a big fire because if I'm far away and I'm able to see that it's a big fire and but from my point of view it looked like a match so I closed my door and I was like that was weird so I was like I am not going to be able to stay locked in here so I walk over to my window and I open the window and again it's complete darkness in the same little match like when I look down and so I close my window 
and I began walking to um, my door again. But it seems like as I'm walking, it seems like it's harder to lift up my feet and it's harder to walk. Like as I'm lifting up my feet, it's more and more difficult. And soon like the gravity becomes so strong that I fall onto the ground and I'm not able to get up. It's like those rides where it's like spinning so fast when you're inside that you can't even like lift up your arms or anything. That's how it felt. And I'm trying to move my arms or my legs or my head or some part of my body just to let me know like I'm able to move. And I feel like I'm on the floor for like hours. But then again, it also feels like seconds. And then again, the floor gives way underneath me. And I fall directly into the fire that I saw when I was in my room. I fall directly onto it. And it's like I'm not really burning though. But I feel the heat and I feel the fire. And the thing is when I'm in these places with first the dead bodies and the sharp floor to now the fire that I'm in. I feel like the scents and the smells are so much stronger than humans. Like a human scent, a human sight, a human feel. And the thing is when I'm in these places, I smell horrible smells. Like it smells like somebody threw up, multiple people threw up in a corner and left it there. And again, I don't see anything. I just see like I'm in like a ring of fire. And I smell that putrid, 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 I don't know the name. Pungent. Pungent. Pungent smell. And it smells like, like vomit and rotting, burning flesh. That's what it smells like. And I'm like, oh no, I, I know I'm not in hell. I know and so um, I'm again in the fire and then I blink like I turn around and then I blink and I'm in like an area but it was like light blue it was like almost a white and I'm in the presence of God but I didn't see his face. I just saw a huge light. Like that's all I could see. And the presence was so strong that I wasn't able to stand in it. And I had to like physically like sit down. I couldn't even like get on my knees because that felt like I was being like disrespectful. So I like sat down and the voice was like, you have done many deeds. And even if I wanted to say something, I couldn't. Like, it was as if my voice was cut off. It was as if, like, there was a knob or a switch in my throat and somebody turned it on off or, like, flipped it off. Like, I couldn't say anything even if I wanted to. And the voice was like, most of your deeds were unrighteous. You know, I was like, mm, I could vouch to that. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't a perfect person. And the voice was like, um, God, I'm not going to keep saying the voice because I know it was God. And God said, you didn't repent for your unrighteous sins. And so I was like, I didn't. Like, I didn't really think much of it. And as I said in the beginning of the video, not a lot of people are realizing that they're committing sins and not repenting. And you'll pay for that. That's, you're going to pay for that. But, um, the voice said, God said you didn't repent. And so, again, I was quiet because I couldn't say anything. I couldn't stand. And the voice, God said, depart from me, you doer of iniquity. I never knew you. That right there, like, it almost brings me to tears because that is something I never want to hear. From God that is 
That is something I never, ever want to hear. And so it was as if God blew, but it was like a strong wind. Like it felt like a hurricane wind blew me like away. And I'm like in the air for a second, then I fall onto the ground. But it wasn't like the same floor as when I was first in that area with the dead bodies and the sharp floor. It wasn't like that. It was like just a like regular concrete ground, but it was it wasn't comfortable. Did it feel like a concrete ground ground? It felt like a ground like you wanted to just get right up from because you didn't feel comfortable laying nor sitting in it. And again, I felt the pungent. I felt the pungent smell again. And it felt stronger. Like it wasn't the vomit that smelled stronger. It was the smell of the burning flesh that felt stronger. So I get up and then like something is like standing over me. And um, it was like, I've been waiting for this a long time. And it was like a demon. And it was, it was skinny and small, but it was taller than me. Like, it was like, it seemed as if it was seven foot. Like, it was, it was tall. And it was like, small but tall. Like, I don't really know how to, how to explain it it was like small in weight but tall in height and so its horns like stretch out to such far lengths it's like it stretches up into like ram horns and so um it like grabs my arm and again I look and I have all the bruises and all the marks that I had when I was in that area before. But this time, I don't have on anything. I don't have on a onesie. I don't have on my mini skirt. I would have worn my mini skirt, you know, at that time, rip torn. At least I would have had something on. But then again, I didn't feel necessarily subconscious about it. And so I look down, I have nothing on, but my whole body is like battered and bruised. And so. I am being dragged by this demon and his nails are so long like it's literal claws and the thing is his fingertips were scorching hot like it felt like he dipped his fingers like he had his fingers like in fire and then like after like 10 minutes he took them out but the palm of his hand was cold and so he's dragging me to this area and he throws me in front of this throne looking thing but it wasn't as big as God's throne it had not anywhere near the same power nor the same size as God's throne had so I'm sitting like being thrown and then I sit up. And the thing is, the power of the devil's throne was, again, nowhere near the power of God's throne. So I was able to stand up and talk. So I stand up. And the devil is sitting on the throne. And he's a lot taller than, like, all the demons. He's, like, 10, 9 foot. Like, he seems extremely tall. But then I feel like if it was a human form... He was seen a little bit taller than me. Like, you see my height? I feel like in human form, the devil probably would have been like right here. But in the spiritual form, he felt like a giant. And so I'm standing there and the devil is not saying anything. Like his body is like red like a deep 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 red like think of like the darkest color red like it was almost a maroon color probably deeper than that and he stands up but it's not like he stands up like it's like he glides up off of his throne 
and it's like he's walking but it's not walking it looks as if he's skating across the floor but again it, it looks like he's just gliding like sliding across the floor and he's like looking at me he's laughing and his voice is deeper like I didn't hear him talking but just his laugh was deeper than any man you can imagine like even if you think of the deepest man's voice that you have ever heard the devil's is deeper than that and he just keeps laughing manically like he's just laughing as if he just saw the funniest vine ever he's laughing hysterically and I'm trying to catch on to the joke, like, what's funny? And the demon thing looks at me with this horrible look. Like, he looks at me as if I was something the cat dragged in. But I look like something the cat dragged in. And so, um, he's looking at me, the demon. And he was like, um, what do you want me to do with her? And again, he gave me that look. And finally, I heard the devil speak. And his voice, like, I can't even impersonate it, obviously, because I'm a girl. But then again, like, the voice that he had was so chilling. Like, it was so scary. And he was like, she thought that she could be a Christian and she could follow God. You know what we do with the Christians? And so his voice was like, oh, my goodness. It was something I never want to hear again. And so the demon thing snapped like, and like I'm in a coffin and I look around me and it's like rows of coffins. It's like one row, then another row, but it's all coffins. But it seems like the fire that's inside of the coffins is being maintained inside of the coffins. It's not coming out and spreading. It's specifically in the coffins and there's bodies in the coffins. People disfigured burning people are inside of the coffins but my coffin has no bugs it doesn't have any fire in it it's empty and it's just a regular wooden coffin and the coffins are big and the bugs that are coming out of the coffins are big as well and there was worms and spiders coming out of the coffins and it was like they're not like the little tiny worms you see here. Or it's not even like as big as a tarantula. It's bigger than that. It was like the worms and the spiders were like three, four feet tall. And they was like, their width was huge. And they're climbing out of the coffins. But the thing is, they're not burning. They have no burn marks. They look fine. They look like... They have not been burned one time, tortured one time by the fire or by anything else. But the people are screaming, crying, yelling out, Jesus save me. I didn't know I would end up here. I just wanted to have fun one day and I died of an overdose. Or like people are just screaming and crying, asking God to help them to get out. And their cries are being unheard. Because they had a chance on earth to fix themselves. And so I look over in like the fifth row of coffins. And I see, well I hear what seemed like it would be Whitney Houston. And I look over and like I hear her talking. And I don't really hear what she sang. But, and I didn't even know if it was Whitney Houston. But the way... That Whitney Houston's voices, it was kind of easy to tell. But then again, like, I didn't know. But I wasn't able to tell from her face because her face was so disfigured. It was like, I'm getting a headache. It was like, it was like her, her face looked like someone poured acid or like burned her face and like, shreds and whatever was left of her face was scratched and and torn and it was horrible and she was crying and saying something but I didn't understand what she was saying and so then I see five demons coming towards me and two of them had buckets of bugs and they're big buckets not little small Easter bunny or Easter baskets no they're big 
buckets full of bugs, but they're not big bugs. They're like um, scorpions and stuff, and but they're small, like you know how you would see in real life. And so the bugs are in the bucket, and the demons are coming towards me. The two demons with the um, bucket of bugs are coming towards me. Then there was another two demons, and they had a bucket of fire, but the fire was being maintained inside of the bucket. Again, it was as if the fire in hell is able to be maintained. And they were inside of the buckets, and it was not going over. The buckets are spreading, and... The demons were, like, coming over to me with, like, these horrible, like, smiles. I wouldn't even call them smiles. It was, like, so dirty. And then um, the other demon had something else in his hand, but I don't, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember, but it was, like, something crazy, I think. It was some type of symbol in his hand. And so um, they're coming over to me. And they're about to dump the buckets into my coffin. But then it seems like a hand reaches up and, like, picks me up and, like, drops me. And then, like, I drop back into my bed. And I'm like, where? I was confused on so many different levels. I was like, okay, did I just die or something? How am I back in my room? Because I was dropped into my bed back in my room. And I was confused. And I was like asking questions out loud. Even though nobody was in my room. I was still asking questions out loud. Like basically talking to myself. And so. Um, I opened the door. Like. Scared. If, like, there was some type of darkness again that I would see. But I open the door and um, it's like my regular hallway with the bathrooms and stuff. And I, like, run out of the room because I'm so happy. And I, like, I'm, like, <laughs> on my mom's bedroom door. And she was, like, what is it? And I just opened the door. And, um... I open the door and she looks at me like, I know you did not just barge into my room, but then I just sit down on the floor in front of her and tell her everything that happened, everything that I saw. And she was like, she gave me a hug and she was like, you know, this is a sign that you need to turn your life around. You, you need to get your life together. And then she gave me another hug and then I woke up from the dream and I feel like this dream was a symbolic message showing that even now, even after I've been delivered, I still make mistakes, but I need to stay on the right path. I cannot get sidetracked, you know. I need to keep on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, salvation, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. The sword, which is the word of God, and the feet of, not the feet, the shoes of peace. The shield of faith. And the shield of faith. That's what I need to keep on. I cannot risk taking any of that stuff off. The helmet or, of salvation. The helmet of salvation, yes. And I cannot risk taking any of that off. Because once I take one of those pieces of armor off, that's automatically my vulnerable spot. Once I put down the sword, which is the word of God, the devil's like, oh, she don't have no weapons to fight with. So they attack me then. Or once I take off the breastplate of righteousness, my heart is exposed. And the devil uses that as a portal to come into my heart. And once I take off the helmet of salvation, my mind, it's exposed. Once I take off the shoes of peace, you know, arguments spark up, anger sparks up. And once I take off the belt of truth, lies begin to proceed out of my mouth. And I can't risk that. I cannot risk 
being vulnerable in certain areas and putting my life on the line and my eternal destiny on the line because I wanted to go have some fun with my friends or because I wanted to try something or because I wanted to do this or because I wanted to see that. I'm going to expose myself and give the devil an opportunity to find a portal to come into my heart, come into my mind and come into my body and get comfortable and not leave. And that's the thing. People think because they pray a few times, they say grace before dinner. They pray in church. They go to church every Sunday that they're going to be saved. You can go to church every Sunday. You can walk old women across the street. You can feed your kids, keep a roof over their head. You can stay faithful to your husband. If you don't got God, if you don't say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and if you don't get saved, you can do all of those things. You can make sure your kids eat a full meal every day. You know, you can rescue animals. You can do all of that and still go to hell. You know why? Because you never took that walk seriously. That's why. And I got trapped up in the devil's snare in the time of my life where I thought... If I prayed a few times and if I went to church, I would go to heaven. And I never truly realized the sacrifices and the commitments that I had to make. And it hurts me to see even people that I don't know personally, see them going down the wrong path, blindly or knowingly. And God has given me gifts and showed me gifts that I have. And he showed me that I'm going to be starting a deliverance ministry. And even though I'm only 13 years old, I can still save people. I can still save people from the snare of the enemy. Because I saw young people in hell as well. I saw 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 17-year-olds. I saw older people too, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds. As my mother told me. Hell does not discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Spanish, Jamaican, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It doesn't matter if you're 30, 40, 50, 60. It doesn't matter if you're 20 years old. Don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and fully give your life over to him and see where you end up. And I just want to let y'all know. This world is passing away. Y'all are not going to live forever. Nobody is going to live forever. Forever. And I know that quote, oh, you only live once, you know, live the best life you can. Okay, go ahead. Live the best life you can. Go, go smoke this and go party out with friends and go do that. Go commit adultery. Go hop around to different people. Go ahead. Do it. You know, that's your life. But when you end up in hell for eternity, don't be upset. Because God has given you the materials now. And I feel like it's meant for this to get posted. Because there are people out there who are blindly following the devil, thinking that they're going down the righteous path. Because I just read in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 11. It was speaking about how the devil comes as an angel of light. And the demons come as ministers of the light and they trap you and you think that you're doing the right thing and you think that you're doing the righteous thing and that's what God is telling you to do and you're being trapped. And I know people who are disobeying God so they decide to hop around to different religions to try to fit and squirm to try and find a religion that fits their disobedience to God so they don't feel bad. It's like they're trying to find every other piece, like they're a circle piece, and they're trying to find every other piece to fit into. They're trying the triangle piece, they're trying the rectangle piece, instead of going to the circle piece. 
but they're trying to fit into every other thing, seeing that they're not able to, but still trying to wiggle in. And my mom told me that I need to stop following people, and I learned that, and I've stopped following people because I stick out like a sore thumb. I try to follow people, fit in with the in crowd, and I know I'm different. I know that I was called for different purposes than the other people that I would try to follow. So I just want to let you guys know that it was meant for this to be given to you. And if you're watching this right now, know that you still have an opportunity to turn your life around and to follow God and to follow Jesus Christ. And the thing that I notice, people say God more than Jesus. You cannot get to God straight away. You need to go through Jesus first. And people talk more about God than Jesus. God has got that. And in a lot of churches, you won't even hear the name Jesus. They skip parts in Bible verses so they could get to God as God said that. Not realizing that Jesus is a part of God. So, all of this boils down to letting you know that hell is real. Hell is real. And if you don't change your life around, that's exactly where you'll end up. And people think that I might be making this up or I'm just a kid. I don't know what I'm talking about. God said that in the last days, he will send out his spirit to all men. And when the Bible says man, he doesn't mean just men, but women as well. And the last days are coming. And this is not the only revelatory dream that I've had. But this is the one that I feel like you guys need to know. Because this is serious. Like, about to turn into the one piece. This is serious. Like, but I'm not even joking though. Like, this is something that you guys need to heed to. Because the devil is here. The devil is in church. The devil is in school. The devil is at your job. The devil is at your house. And if you're not prepared with the armor of God, he's going to entrap you. And you're not even going to realize it. The devil is so cunning and you, he can use his words and make it sound so righteous. And make it sound like, oh, that's God. Not even realizing that it's the devil. That's why you need to have a relationship with God because God will talk to you and you will know that it's his voice and you won't be mistaken by the devil's voice thinking, oh, that has to be God. If you have a relationship with God, you'll know when he's talking. God says his sheep will know his voice. You will know. God speaks about the last days, how false prophets and antichrists will come. And there are people now who are professing to be Jesus Christ. There are people now, y'all just might not have heard about it, but this world is passing away. It's passing away and people are passing away with it, not even realizing where they're going. So I know I'm talking a lot, I know, but you need to hear this. And again, people think just because I'm young that I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm just using my imagination. If I was just using my imagination, you wouldn't be feeling what you should be feeling right now. You wouldn't be feeling the power that's coming from my words. And it wouldn't be as vivid in my memory if it was just my imagination. Because there are a lot of things I imagine now. I don't remember them now. But then again, there's those revelatory things that God shows me and I can't forget. And this was a dream that I wanted to push as far back in my memory as possible because it just hurt me to see that I could go there if I don't change my ways. And it also hurts me to know that there are people out there who may go there if they don't change their ways. But now I feel like that it's important for people to know that hell is real, God is real, and the devil is also real. So I just want to let you know that you need to stay prayed up. And you need to get the armor of God. Because what God is doing, he's equipping us. You know, no charge. You know, no no playing. You know, he doesn't want anything from you but love. He doesn't want anything from you but your heart. And he doesn't want to trap you and snare you and, and do something to you 
and do something bad. He wants to help you. He wants to have you come with him. That's why Jesus died for you. He died for you. And people may think, oh, that's all fake. And, oh, there are other religions. What other religion have you heard where someone died for you? There is none. There are other religions. We study religions in school where there's Buddha, where he gave up everything. And that's why people follow him. Did he die for you? Did he go through a treacherous death so you can go to heaven and you won't go to hell? How about all those gods that the Hindus and the Indians worship and the Muslims? Did he die for you? I didn't think so. So I just want to let you know that God is real and he's reaching out to you through me, through this video, letting you know that he wants you to come with him, but you have to willingly come with him. Thank you for watching.